Hey there guys, I'm Lee Williamson and today I'm going to show you how to orbit a camera around an object inside of Cinema 4D. Uh, it could be quite useful for um, uh, spinning logo animations but maybe a little bit more dynamic. So without further ado, let's dig in. Right, so here we have this uh, building that I want to orbit around. Uh, the first thing you need to do is drop a camera on your scene. Uh, second thing you need to do is drag a circle spline onto your scene. You can see the spline over there. Let me just rotate it around to minus 90. Press T on the keyboard and scale it nice and up. And move up to scene. There you can see the spline. Now if I click on a few, you can't really see it properly because, well, my background's blue. So we can easily resolve that. We can go into our uh, basics and go and turn color on and the display color can be white so it definitely won't disappear I mean, even let's just put it red so you can actually see it has changed color good stuff so next step would be to put a align to spline tag on the camera and drag that circle spline into the path and now what's happened is the camera has attached itself to the spline and if you turn the camera on and look at it you now can uh, orbit the camera with your position, but it's still not the camera is still not looking at the building. So the next cool thing you can do is you can go to your tags and choose target. And what is the target you want the camera to look at? It would be the L of the building. So I can click on target, drag the L into my target, and now it's looking at the camera. Uh, we're still a little bit too far away from the camera so i can do two things i can either press t on my keyboard and scale up the spline or let's just go back to where i was before i can tell uh take the camera at a different uh uh angle so if i go uh wide angle lens that could also work very well um, now what we're the next thing to do so we want to animate this so i'm going to click on this uh Align to spline tag, and I'm going to drop down the keyframe on zero. And I'm going to drag it along to 200 and drop a keyframe and put it on 99.9. .9. Now you notice I haven't put it on 100% because, uh, well, let's just say that when it is fully looping around, uh, you want that 100% uh, actually to be the zero percent. So you've got that perfect loop. Now, if I click right click on the arrow and I go to show F curve, the other problem is when this is animating on, you notice how it slows out, then animates, and then eases in at the end. We don't want any easing on our animation. Uh, so what we could do is we could select both keyframes, right click and put linear. So what actually happens now is it plays at the same speed all the way through. There we go. And I'm still not quite happy with that, uh, how far the camera zoomed out from the building. So I can just make my spline larger. There we go. And another cool thing we can do to make sure it's lined up is we can go on our camera under composition and press grid. And then you can go in your grid settings and set as many cells as you want. So let me put it to five. Now that feels nice and centered. I can also go to uh, crosshair and drop down some crosshair so you see roughly where your middle point is. Another thing that might also be very helpful is um, you can go into your view options here and you click on uh, configure, which is shift V. And under back, uh, no, it's not back, it's view. Now, there's this tinted board on the top and bottom um, of your viewport. Uh, usually this is set to like 10%. And the problem with that is then you don't actually know what the camera is actually seeing and how it exports at the end of the day. So I like to put that nice and high up. Let's just say it to about 80 and then now I know exactly what has been rendered out when I export this animation out. So this was a simple tutorial, but still very uh, needed uh, if you're quite new to Cinema 40. 
Sorry, I realized I forgot to mention one thing. Uh, well, actually two things. Uh, first of all, if you want to do an infinite loop, it's not 99.9, .9, it's nine, uh, just 99%. Now, if I go in and I show you uh, my F curve, you notice it's a linear curve. And if I change this to 100 and then drop a keyframe, uh, that's odd. Usually it should default it to a soft curve. Uh, and to prevent it from uh, defaulting to a soft curve, you uh, actually tell you what, if I just put it to a really odd looking curve. Let's just make it all wonky like that. Uh, that might get up across the point a lot easier. Let's just put that position on 99. And there we go. Now, when I recorded that position, you notice how it, uh, it bounced to its uh, default. And so now I was quite happy with that curve it's, uh, and I, I didn't want to mess with that. So you can go into your project settings and you just check on overdub. And what that will do is it will maintain your curve editor the way it was in the beginning. So now if I go 99 and record a keyframe, it hasn't messed with your curve editor. Uh, it's a very useful one to do, especially if you spend many hours uh, just teasing those curves really nicely and then suddenly Cinema 40 cogs it up. So Remember Overdub, it is fantastic. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.